Hello, welcome to Michelle Sews again. I'm Michelle. It's Friday, so let's do this Friday Sews thing. If you wanna hear what I've been making, what plans I have coming up, and a little bit about life, then please stay tuned. Okay, so one of the things I wanna get better about next year is sharing what I'm wearing when I'm filming videos. So I always put it in the description box but I don't always talk about it. So I just wanted to start out every video going forward with what it is that I'm wearing in case you're interested. Know that the link to the pattern and if I have a review to it, the link for the review will be in the description box going forward. So what I have on today is my second version of the Charlie Caftan from Closet Core Patterns. This is the view that I made that has the pleats right here and um, I made it out of this ice dyed fabric that I dyed and I hate it. <laughs> um, I will do a full review on this one. Um, it's just so bizarre how view A is my absolute favorite dress that I've ever made and view B or C, whichever view this is, does not suit me whatsoever. So I'll get more into that in a review that's going to come up soon. But that's what I'm wearing today. Um, all right, so what have I made this week? <laughs> it's been a really slow week. Um, I've been on staycation. I'll talk a little bit more about that during the life part, but um, I've been doing stuff around the house. I've been doing a lot of planning for 2024 for both my sewing, my channel, my sewing, my Instagram, but also for my personal life and actually for work as well. But as far as making something, I did make something. Um, I had seen this quilt, not quilted, I had seen this like blanket shawl thing on QVC. And I mentioned last week that I get really cold in my office, even though the rest of the house is perfectly comfortable. Um, somebody did mention like checking the vents and making sure that they're not pointing straight at me. I do still need to do that. I need my husband's help for that because even with a ladder, I just can't reach. But, um, so I will check that, but this blanket shawl looked perfect. It's just like a big blanket, but it's got like a section cut out so that it can go over your shoulders. And then it's got pockets right here. So I was like, that looks kind of simple. I think I can make it. And so that's what I did. I just took, I had a thrifted quilt. It was just a white, maybe off-white, 100% cotton quilt that I got from a thrift store. And so I took that and, whoopsie. So I took that, I folded it in half, I laid it down on the ground. I did check the dimensions on the blanket shawl from QVC. I'll pop a picture of the inspiration item up here. Um, and then I just kind of took those dimensions and just kind of sketched out with my blue washable marker um, the outline of, because uh, it's literally just a big oval. And then on the neckline, you just cut out a notch. So I took that, I cut it out, and then I ice dyed it because it needed some color. And this is where the notch is for the neck. This is what... These are the flaps that go over your shoulder. So let me just show you. And then um, once I cut it out, I ice dyed it, I washed it and dried it. Then I just took some bias tape and went around the edge. I didn't have enough of a single color to go all the way around the edge, but because it's a multicolor rainbow ice dye, I was able to use three different colors of um, bias binding and I think it worked out really well. The, colors actually match perfectly. I have this bright green that matches the green. I've got this blue that works well with the turquoise. And then I've got a hot pink. So the way that you wear it is you just pop it over your shoulders and there it is. You're wearing a blanket. Now I did make pockets to go on the front flaps. My machine will not get over the thickness of the two piece, the two quilt layers together. So I have ordered one of those hump jumpers. I don't actually have one. Um, and I think that will help me 
um, to be able, because I really do want the pockets. I think that's what makes the shawl um, so perfect. And this is just so easy to flip off and on when I'm sitting at my desk for work. I'm gonna do like, I, I'm not gonna do a tutorial because I did film myself marking this out and cutting it out and I've lost the footage. I don't know if I didn't actually hit record um, or if I deleted it, whoops, um, but I can't find it. So I'm just going to explain in a little bit more detail what I actually did in a separate video. So if you're interested in how to make that, then make sure you're subscribed and click the notification bell to make sure you get notified when I post that video. So that's the only thing that I've finished this week. Well, and I guess I haven't finished because I haven't put the pockets on yet, um, but I'm close. It's wearable as is. The other thing that I've worked on, but I'm not even remotely finished, is my scrappy ice dyed quilt. I did a few more panels, a few more squares of that, um, and I'm just working on that a little bit at a time. Um, I think I'm going to commit to doing like 30 minutes of that a day. Um, and I did get a great uh, kind of guideline uh, file from Andra, from Andra Makes, on the different size quilts. So I'm going to do a little bit of research and figure out what size quilt I want to make because the more things I do that are big on my machine, the more I realize I don't want a humongous quilt. I'm not ready for that yet. <laughs> so it'll probably be more like a lap, a lap blanket, a lap quilt. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, so I'm working on that and having a lot of fun with it. And then I've also been taking some social media courses. So I'm just trying to figure out what direction I want to go. Um, I want to improve the quality of my videos, both what I'm presenting and how it's presented. So editing and lighting and things like that. And I want my Instagram to be a little bit more engaging and thoughtful. So I'm taking some courses on how to do that. And it's partly so that it is better for you guys, but it's also partly so that it's more interesting for me. I've been doing this for three years now. I know it's not a long time in the world of YouTube, but things do tend to get repetitive. So I am interested in throwing out some new ways of doing things. Um, it just helps with my, uh, creative juices, if you will. The other thing I've been working on this week is my sewing journal. So I had shown you guys this last year where I keep track of like notes of what I've made and a photograph of what I made. And um, I had caught this up completely for 2022 in January of 2023. So January of this year, I got 2022 completely caught up. And I also did January of 2023. And don't you know, that's where I stopped. <laughs> so um, I spent all day yesterday making the notepads for um, each of my makes this year. I went through my Instagram, I went through my YouTube, I went through my photographs and my phone to make sure I captured everything that I made. I made 43 things this year, not counting ready to wear stuff that I've ice dyed. This is stuff that I've actually sewn. And so now I'm just, um, I've got all of my notes completed and put in. And what I found was that I had a couple of makes that I had not mentioned in YouTube and I had not put on Instagram. So I am gonna go through, once I finish updating this, I'm gonna go through and add those pictures to Instagram. I may or may not do a YouTube video, we'll see. Um, but I'm going to get that all caught up on Instagram. And then what I talked to my sew sisters about last night, we had our weekly, um, zoom call is that I need to reframe this and make this part of my whole sewing process. So just like cutting out the pattern pieces, making your fit adjustments before you cut out your fabric, cutting the fabric, all of that is part of the process. It's not grunt work. It is part of the entire, from A to Z, it's part of the process for creating a garment or whatever sewing item you happen to be making. And for me, the last step in that whole process has to be documenting all of my notes, 
um, putting it on my template, taking a photograph of it, posting it on Instagram, doing a YouTube um, pattern review, and putting it in my journal. So all of that is part of the whole process for me. And that, if I get that in my head, then I won't be here a year from now catching up 2024. <laughs> Fingers crossed. We'll see. Anyway, so that's what I've been working on. Oh, and one last little thing. I made a small tweak to my sewing space. These are the boxes that I have all of my PDF patterns, the ones that are cut out and either made or that are rough cut because I was planning on making them at some point sooner than later. And you can see I've got four of them here. And they were stacked on top of each other next to my sewing machine, which from a physical space perspective, that actually worked out really well. But from an actual working perspective, it was too cumbersome. So they're in alphabetical order. So if I needed something from the S to Z box, it was all the way at the bottom. So I had to lug everything off. It really isn't that big of a deal, but it was kind of a pain in the butt. So I moved my boxes to be on top of my fabric. I really didn't want them there because I'm not trying to hide my gorgeous mural, but it, honestly, from a functionality standpoint, it just works a lot better. So I think it was worth it. All right, so what is next? So as I mentioned last week, I'm really not in the mood to sew garments for myself right now. So with that said, I am going to continue working on my ice dyed scrappy quilt. Um, I really would like to get that finished sooner than la later. As I was scrolling through all of my um, photos in my phone, I realized I started that thing in February. So it's been almost a year that I've been working on it. Um, and by working on it, I mean, I went gung ho in the beginning. I might have sewn a couple of squares here and there, um, but really I haven't touched it very much this year. So I'd like to get going on that. And now is the perfect time because I do still want to sew. I haven't actually lost my sojo. I've just lost my desire to make garments for myself. So I'm going to work on that. Um, I do still need to work on my collage quilt. I don't know if you can see it up there on the wall. Um, so that the collage part's done and I did ice dye a piece of fabric as my background. I pulled some of the colors out. I didn't want it to be, most of the collage is blues and greens and I didn't want it to blend with the background. I wanted that to stand out on the background. So um, I did oranges and yellows, which are colors that are in the collage. They're just less of them. So I think this will pull those out and help to create contrast between the collage and the background. So I'd like to work on finishing that up as well. Again, I need to figure out what size I want to make because I don't want it to be so massive. A, because it would leave way too much background outside of the collage. Although I can put some additional um, collage pieces on the background. They don't have to be attached to the collage. So I'll think about that, but I need to think about what size I want to make. Um, and that one's going to be more of a wall hanging anyway. It's not going to be used as a quilt for warmth. So I can go smaller on that one. Um, and I might maybe make a sweatshirt just so that I have something warm and cozy to wear when I'm working. I've yet to decide on that. I keep thinking I'm going to do it and then I'm not in the mood to do it. So We'll see where that goes, but definitely going to keep working on my scrappy quilt. All right, so now it's life. As I mentioned, I've been on staycation this week. I got a Friday last week at two o'clock, so I've been off since then. I took this whole week off. The office is closed on Monday for New Year's Day, so I don't go back to work till Tuesday. And I've been spending time just planning my life out. I am thinking about what I'm gonna do with my channel. My Sew Sisters and I talked about what our goals are for this year, both just for our sewing in general and our channels and things like that. And I'll talk more about that. I'm gonna have like a, a reintroduction to me kind of video um, coming out soon that'll talk about some of that stuff. Um, 
and I am going to be working on getting healthier. I'm going to jump start that action with a whole 30. If you haven't ever done a whole 30, then, you know, it's something that um people think is extreme. <laughs> it is a whole foods elimination, well, that doesn't sound right. It's an elimination diet where all you eat is whole foods. The purpose of it is not necessarily to lose weight, that happens to be a side effect. The purpose of it is to eliminate foods that are known to be inflammatory, to cause digestive issues. They just have a whole host of issues in the majority of people from, from a low end degree to a high end degree. A lot of people don't realize it because they just feel crummy all the time. They don't realize that it's the foods that they're eating and the foods that affect me may not be the same foods that affect you. So the purpose of it is to eliminate dairy, grains, alcohol. Um, I need to brush up on it, but um, there's a lot of things that you eliminate for 30 days. We can all do anything for 30 days. And then you slowly, on day 31, start reintroducing one at a time the things that you eliminated so that you can make informed decisions going forward. It's not saying that if you discover that dairy affects your knees or your skin or whatever, bloating, that you can never have dairy again. It just means that now you know dairy causes these issues. So if you choose to have dairy, you know what the impact is gonna be. I think it's pretty good, uh, great idea. Um, I am having trouble with my left knee again. Part of it is because I've put weight back on. Part of it's because I'm eating crappy foods again. So I want to figure out exactly, I do know gluten affects my joints. That's one that I'm well aware of. Um, but the rest of them, I've done a whole 30 once before and I was successful for the 30 days, but I didn't do the reintroduction part. So uh, I just jumped right back into it when I was done. So this time I'm doing the whole thing. So I'm not, I need to read about the reintroduction part because it's, you know, you, you reintroduce one food at a time and then you wait, I think one or two days and figure out how your body feels. What is it affecting foggy brain? You know, whatever the case may be. And so I'm committed to doing that part. At max, it's 45 days. I don't even think it's that long. It's 45 days out of a whole calendar year. That's not that long to discover some information about yourself if you're tr truly trying to make a change, which is what I'm trying to do. So I'm going to be starting that on January 2nd. I've got a I've joined a cohort of people that are doing it. So I've got support. My husband's gonna do it with me. So it's gonna be a good program and I'm already excited about doing it and starting to feel better. The first week is gonna be pretty crappy, I'm gonna be honest. Um, so I might be a little cranky, <laughs> um, but I'll get through it. I've done it before, I know I can make it through. Okay, so now I'm to the question of the week for the Friday so's community and this week the question is okay so there's three days until 2024 do you have any plans to going to a fancy new year's eve party if so did you make your outfit and do you have any pattern suggestions i haven't done anything special for new year's in i can't remember how long um i'm usually in bed by 11 at the latest usually between 9 and 10 is my normal bedtime and my husband has worked often on New Year's Eve for the last many years just because he's in the hospitality industry and the hotels always get packed with partiers and whatever for New Year's Eve. So I, you know, I'm alone at midnight anyway, so I just, I'm asleep usually. Um, I'm not a big partier anymore anyway. Um, it's just not, not my thing. I enjoy gathering with friends, but parties, I'm too tired for that. I'm too tired for that. I would love to hear though if you are going to something fancy. I'll live vicariously through you. Tell me if you've made your outfit. Tell me if you have any wonderful pattern suggestions for anybody else that's watching that might be interested in sewing something for themselves for that fun night. Wherever you are, I hope the weather's amazing. I hope you're able to get some sewing in and I will talk to you next time. Bye.